Welcome back to Norman's Exploration. In the last video, we did the shopping cart, but in this video, you might have seen this in the background. This is a Simplicity 6200 series. As I was feeding my marketplace addiction, we found this. This is a, like you said, 6211 Simplicity with an 11 horse engine and a plow. Now, it is a, let's see, three speed, has your typical GT shift pattern, um, and it even has limited slip, so we say. Apparently not running, and uh, it's going to need a little bit of work, but hopefully by the end of the day, it should be moving. You yeah. should state that this is a three-speed with a variable transmission. We'll get you in here and we'll start working on this thing. Yeah. So, new carb, brand spanking new, doesn't match anything else, it's on, um, everything's hooked up, and Wes has a uh, fuel tank we're just going to hook up just to see if it wants to fire. Okay, it's good. There's like 9 million different on this But it runs. Alright, so this is the old fitting that goes into the bottom of the fuel tank here. And uh, this rubber grommet that's supposed to be on there kind of snapped off and we couldn't get it back in. And, uh, well, we got a solution here. Kind of not what you're supposed to do. Work that on there. <laughs> this will go on. And then we'll have that put onto an L fitting that we're just going to thread straight into there. All right, we went for a different kind of janky fitting. Uh, a giant, what looks like some kind of hydraulic hose barbed fitting. And we slipped this tiny opening over that. And then, to make it even better. <laughs> to really, yeah, yeah, just really. Can't have these things leaking. Though. Yeah. Just, especially with today's fuel pulses. All right, first test run. We got the carb on, but it's kind of doing weird things. It only runs in choke, and if it's off choke, it runs away. Yeah. And that might be due to the fact that it's the cheapest Chinese carb we could find. Wes is gonna hop on, see if it even moves. We Got reverse, that's always good. Now it's starting to run away. Somebody put the shift fork in wrong. So, just a quick update. Uh, the reason it's such a mess under there right now for taking the engine off, uh, we spent like two hours trying to take that bottom pulley off because we thought the bottom pulley didn't fit through this hole. It turns out it was precision cut for that pulley the whole time. So we just 
lifted it, and then it came right out. We were trying to take that pulley off, and uh, we did not have to at we all. We fought it for so long. It was like two hours, or an hour. Yeah, an hour. Probably like an hour. Probably yeah. an hour, yeah, an hour worth of fighting. Turns out, we didn't need to fight it at all. We were getting all mad at the simplicity for being a complexity, yeah. when really, we were just stupidity. We got the whole thing super clean. We kind of scrubbed some of the big stuff. And now we're gonna go in and rinse it off. If you haven't already figured out what's going on by now, this isn't cutting it. It's gonna go away. We're not sorry for it. We've got a V-twin outside, which you've probably already seen by now. It is 22 and a half horsepower, and it's gonna do the job with this simplicity. Yep, this is an 11 horse. It's just not going to hold up to what we're going to put it through. No. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, roll the B-roll. Getting it all wired up. And, uh, it's gonna be good. And we're gonna go for a first start. Yeah. Short ones front, big ones rear. That's it. That's it. A little bit. Oh yeah, it's going right in. 
<laughs> Bounce right up. What are the odds of that? All right, we're gonna see if the hood fits. Engine's pretty much mocked out. That's right where it's gonna go. Could be. I don't know if it goes on the outside. Yeah, it goes on the outside of those. Or does it? Yeah. Oh, no, inside. Yeah, okay. It's like there wasn't even. It's like it was meant for. It, it literally fits. We thought we were gonna have to trim like right here. Yeah, maybe. with the valve covers and stuff. The valve covers sticking out, but no. No. And if you paint the valve covers orange, you'll be able to see them tucked in here. It literally fits. Like you couldn't ask for better fitment. That literally is like it was designed for V twin. And mind you, they didn't have V twins for these yet. In no. the eighties, they didn't actually. I don't think any lawnmowers had a V twin. The only maybe the, in a post twin. yeah post one was a sixteen horse post one I think was the the twin cylinder you could get, which would have stuck out here on the side where these open sections are. But yeah, this fits like insanely good. <laughs> the bolts line up, all that. It's just it's like it was meant to be. Only thing like literally the thing that's gonna set us back the furthest is just having to get the throttle line off of the other mower and put <laughs> yeah. it on. Oh wow, look, the bolt's barely clear. The long ones? Oh, yeah. oh that way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was close. Alright guys, you can kind of see the smoke in the air. We just bumped the starter to see if the bolt pump would work and it just fired up. So, he's getting some uh, citrus all in there. Premium starter today, by the way. It needs to be probably choked. Choked. Uh, we're just going to see if it'll start. Kill switch is right here. Oh, look, the light came back on. Okay. Alright guys, last time this was ran by the previous owner, had water in the fuel, it's basically got bad fuel and we put good fuel in it, so we're going to try to run that out real quick. Something is very obviously missing here. Uh, the entire dashboard and fuel tank are back off again because we have to get to this right here. This is the throttle linkage and it's extremely short. It just goes straight shot from here right to where the old engine throttle was. We need to put this longer throttle one on because this one actually reach the front of the engine down there. So we gotta get to work drilling these rivets out because it is riveted. They didn't design it to be taken out. So here we go.
janky fuel fittings. Yes, because uh, the janky fuel fitting one didn't work out, so <laughs> yeah. we're paying for that now. Yeah, yeah, this is this is us after the fact. <laughs> Check it out, guys. Braided clear fitting. 79 cents. Say less. Way better than a dollar seventy nine. So go for the braided clear stuff. The janky fuel fittings too. <laughs> it's not working. No, it's it's not working right now. I wonder if you can see it. Huh. Trained professionals. It gets jankier because we're gonna adapt that to this. It's really good for your fuel and there's just plastic shavings, you know, <laughs> right in there. You're basically bevel cutting it, right? What you just did there was bevel, just beautifully beveled it. I just want enough to start the threads so it'll take it on its own and be obviously tight enough. So. <laughs> A little more bevel. Again, all of this is to step down to this quarter barbed fitting. Perfect. We even put Teflon tape for maximum blockage. We definitely know what we're doing. So then you just, you know, that's about, you know, tight as you want it. You don't want to go too tight, otherwise it'll just strip the non-existent threads. I mean, that looks professional. That is professional. Yeah. This is way better than the last one. What size is that? <sighs> Crescent wrench size. Yeah, that's the size. As long as you have a few barbs on there. Yeah, we got like three, you know that. That'll do. Got this braided fuel line. Oh yeah. I should probably like put some fuel in that, make sure it doesn't leak. I got a little better than B12, so we're gonna put a little of this in there. It's basically, if you know sea foam, this is basically what that is. Uh, we're just gonna pour a little in the fuel. Precision. Basically our issue is it's not running right. It's kind of like, it'll idle and run and then it'll just die. Yep. So we're just gonna kind of run this through the carb and hopefully it helps. Shit. But uh, anyways, we are making good progress. Got all of our electrical hopefully done. We're gonna go in and start it up and see if our kill switch here works. And also our lights, throttle, choke, Any of that? Oh, gosh. everything pretty much. So we're just gonna run you through the checklist really quick. Go for it. Yeah, so we just got done doing a bunch of stuff. Basically we ran these two longer cables, which would be choke and throttle. Fuel line, because our janky fuel fittings, if you remember that segment, well, that didn't work. So we put a brand new fuel fitting and new fuel line, and then you can go over the electrical. Yeah, over here we've got a whole new wiring harness set up. We've got power going to the ignition block on startup. We've got a kill wire going to a kill switch that you can see over here. Really cool looking kill switch, mind you. And we've got a couple other little doodads such as charging to go to the lights when we wire those up. So uh, we're just gonna fire this thing up and hope that it works. So I'll go for some choke, choke. charge we've got to restore this plow blade now we've got a full setup of two stage primer and chrome paint oh yeah we're here. about to restore this plow back to factory condition here we go oh yeah you don't, you don't need to pay the paint shop forty eight hundred dollars you just do it yourself 
And after 48 hours of work, we've got a fully freshly restored plow blade, two stage primer, and chrome. It's fully chrome plated. I mean, you wouldn't even know that it was rusty or at any point in its life. You wouldn't even know in the first two months. Ready to go to the field. That's right, folks. It runs and drives. Sorry for the watermark. That thing is so loud, it's insane. Both wearing ear protection because that thing is just an absolute unit. So we're back at the farm. It's been a while for us, um, not in the video world because it's cut straight to this for you. Uh, we've been working on the simplicity this entire time. It is a 6211, as you may already know from the beginning. It started life with a dirty old 11 horse engine. Didn't want to run quite right. But now it's got a 22 and a half V-twin that we spent this whole time working on. It still doesn't have exhaust, needs a couple minor touch-ups, but it is functional. It does run and it does drive. So. That's what we've got. We should probably explain why this video took as long as it did. We have a brand new schedule, which we'll try and tell you right now. Yeah, so it, we're shooting for about a video a month. This would be technically March's video, but it kind of ran late, obviously. That's why you're seeing it in April. But we're just going as fast as we can, trying to get as much content packed into one video so it's not just boring little things. Yeah, so basically what happens is we start filming for one month and we film throughout the month and post it for that month. And basically what we've had happen recently is we'll film for that month, but it'll run into the next month because that kind of stuff happens because we try to put a ton in. And this video ended up being about 24 minutes as you're seeing right now. Uh, but we hope you guys enjoyed this was definitely worth it. It's a hilariously fun it Definitely, tractor. It definitely pays off. You guys, I'm sure, will notice how much better this video is compared to our last Especially few. Especially the last. But, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so just subscribe, like, comment if you have any thoughts about this lawnmower. Maybe future suggestions for yes, future videos. Definitely suggestions. We need suggestions. <laughs> yeah, bad. So see you guys next time. Take care. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's going in. That's going in. <laughs>